Hey friends! Today we are going to talk a little bit about felties and patches. Um, one of my most asked questions on my TikTok live streams are, can you take a regular felty design and stitch it out and make a patch out of it? Um, the short answer to that is yes you can, but you will have limitations with what you can actually do um, with one of these patches. Um, they are not recommended for clothing. Um, anything that you would put through a washing machine or anything like that, um, that is just going to tear up your felt. So not exactly recommended for washing machine purposes, but you can still use them. That Just because you can't stick it through a washing machine and wash it doesn't mean that you still can't use it. Um, you can put these on a multitude of different things. You can put these on hats. You can put these on um, jackets or canvas bags or anything that, you know, if you don't want to go the traditional route of gluing your felty on, um, you can, again, with limitations, you can use iron-on patches. So, to get started, um, let's talk about our materials that we are going to need today. So obviously you're going to need your stabilizer and your hoop. Um, today we are going to be using my Brother SE625 4x4 machine to stitch this out. This is a great little um, project for 4x4 machines. Um, again, Another question I get asked a lot is, you know, what can you do with a 4x4 hooped machine? And the answer to that is a lot of things. Um, you can do so many different things with a 4x4 machine. Um, you don't necessarily have to um, stitch out felties. You don't have to do that at all. Um, when it's all said and done, like the area that you're going to be able to stitch out on a 4x4 machine is about the size of at least my hand. I, I think I have small hands, but you're going to be able to stitch out something at least the size of your hand, um, which, you know, it's a square about, let's see, you're looking at a square about this big. So, not too shabby at all. Now, if you do want to do something a little bit bigger, obviously, you know, you're going to need a bigger hoop. But, I stitch out, I stitch out felty sheets just fine on this little hoop right here. So, let's talk about what else we're going to need. So we've got our hoop with our stabilizer, and my personal preference of stabilizer is tearaway stabilizer, and I tend to like the, the stabilization of two sheets of tearaway stabilizer. Um, I buy my stabilizer in 50 yard rolls, so I will just cut um, the width, and then I will fold it over, um, and double it that way instead of actually using two large sheets. I will just fold it over like this. Um, this is how I do it. Um, right or wrong, this is what works for me. So you are more than welcome to try it. Um, but this is just the way I do it. Um, of course, you're going to need your felt and on this since we're not putting felt on the back we're only going to need um, a front piece we're going to need all of our coordinating threads and at the end we are going to need heat and bond um, this is an iron-on transfer we're not in a transfer an adhesive 
Um, it's Heat and Bond Ultra Hold. You can get this at Hobby Lobby. Um, you can get this at Joann's. You can buy it on Amazon. But the cheapest place that I have actually found this is at Walmart. This is like $8 a roll at Walmart where you're going to be paying, you know, upwards of $10 to $12 anywhere else. So if you've got a Walmart nearby, um, in the craft section, you can get this heat and bond. It's literally, it's the same thing as what I got from Hobby Lobby here. Um, it's a five yard roll. Everything is the same. It's just cheaper because we like to save money where we can. Alrighty. Um, you're going to need scissors to cut your jump stitches and scissors to cut out your project. Um, another question I get asked a lot um, is scissors. What kind of scissors do you use? And I prefer, I prefer these. These are my preferred scissor to cut things out with. These are just um, an old pair of household scissors. They're titanium Fiskars. Um, my husband sharpens them for me, um, and they're, they're just very comfortable in my hand. Um, now, I, I also like using these, and I got these from the Dollar Tree. So, I mean, you don't necessarily have to have a high dollar pair of scissors to get a good cut. Um, obviously, they do need to be sharp but they also need to be comfortable in your hand at the same time. So, with that, let's get started with stitching out our design. Okay, so to start off, obviously we are going to need a design. Um, you can download thousands and thousands of different designs, um, whether they are purchase designs or whether you happen to find them for free. Um, you can download all kinds of designs anywhere. Um, my, my preferred method if I'm going to purchase um, is either from Etsy or I will find an Etsy seller and see if they have a website. I prefer to purchase from a direct website rather than Etsy because I know that the creator on Etsy is not going to get the majority of the money that I am paying them. So I would rather my money go 100% to the creator than um, them only getting just a small portion of it. So the design that I have chosen today is um, a design that I digitized myself. Um, and I do sell my digitized designs on my website, which is linked in my bio. Um, so I chose a cute little, um, we're going to recreate this little Squishmallow Llama here. So um, we are going to put our hoop on first. And then... Um, what I like to do is when I run my placement stitch, I always run the placement stitch in the next color that is actually going to be used since this is a single needle machine. Um, you know, it just kind of helps with the changing of the threads and whatnot. It makes it just a little bit easier. One less, one less, um, bout of thread to have to mess with. Alrighty. And this is a question, I know I'm answering a lot of questions here, um, but this is a question I get asked a lot as well, is how do I um, keep my machine from nesting? Well, this isn't going to keep it from nesting 100%, but it will um, stop it from nesting so much. It won't be so bad. You still may get a little bit of it, but it is going to kind of take away a lot of it. Um, when you've got your tail through your needle, hold on to your tail. Um, don't hold it tight, tight, but just hold on to it. So when you push that button, it doesn't go all the way down 
underneath. Because that is what is causing um, your machine to nest a little bit. And then obviously the whole reason for our placement stitch is to make sure that the piece of felt or vinyl, faux leather, whatever you're going to use um, is going to be, whoops, hit the camera, is going to be big enough to cover that area. So just like that, and we'll grab our tail again, and I like to let it get nice and tied in, and then I will cut that tail so it doesn't get caught up in anything. Alrighty, so now that we are done with that, um, we are going to just move the machine out of the way here. I'm going to go ahead and turn it off because I'm not going to be using it anymore. So now we're going to go ahead and we're going to make sure that all of our jump stitches are trimmed and everything looks good. We're looking good on the front so far. So now what we're gonna do is on the back. Normally, we wouldn't mess with this because we're gonna put a piece of felt over it, right? Well, in this case, um, we are going to need to trim away some of these flyaway stitches, as I like to call them. Um, they're like our tie-ins and our tie-outs, all that good stuff. We just want our, we want the back of this project to be um, as smooth as possible without actually damaging um, anything that's going to make the stitches on the front side fall out. So there we go. Looks pretty good, right? So now I need to come over here and I need to cut a piece of our heat and bond that will fit over my little my little llama here. Now that we've got our heat and bond trimmed, you'll notice that one side has paper and then the other side has that shiny part. This is the part that um, we are going to iron on to the back of our felt piece here. So we are going to take this out of the hoop and I am going to very carefully tear away the the tear away stabilizer. Um, it doesn't have to be precise because we will end up cutting cutting around this anyway. Um, I have tried cutting out my design first but that just creates a whole nother mess of problems that we really don't um, we really don't need so you need your ironing board or I use um, my my Cricut easy press mat and obviously we're going to lay we're going to lay that face down 
and we're going to put our heat and bond um, shiny side down and I did get that a little too big so I am going to trim around this um, as close as possible to the felt just because um, I don't want to have to be peeling anything off of my my mat here because let's face it it's happened a few times <laughs> okay and as always you're going to need something to cover this with because you are applying heat and pressure to it um, I have a nice little piece of this is like a, a flour sack cloth or towel or whatever you want to call it um, sometimes I normally have a piece of um, muslin that I use but I don't know where it is so we're just gonna cover that up just like that and my iron is set for 275 ish degrees um, obviously actually I'm gonna need a little more heat I do believe it's not very hot actually this iron this iron doesn't get all that hot so um, we'll just kind of apply some even pressure while um, we're waiting for it to you know heat up and stuff and I can the good thing about this little iron is it heats up quite heats up quite fast um I got this little guy at the Walmart because I am not too good to shop at the Walmarts actually you know that's the only thing I have near me um, I don't have a Target. I don't have anything like that. So, Walmart it is. And sometimes I'm a little too impatient to buy off of Amazon because I don't even want to wait the next day. So, here we go. That should be on there good enough. Yes, it is. Now, we're going to wait just a few seconds to you know a minute or two to let this cool off um, if we were to cut anything away right now a we're gonna burn our fingers because it's really hot and B um this needs to cool off so it fully bonds to our felt fabric alrighty so now that we are nice and cooled off um here's our front Here's our back. Now we are going to cut it out. So just, just like you would cut a felty, you know, make sure that you don't get too close to your stitches. And like I said, you know, your traditional patch um, is going to be made differently where you would have that nice thick satin outline um, around it and you really wouldn't have to worry all that much about this um, about cutting through your stitches and whatnot and there you go you got your nice cute little patch and then all you would do to put it on whatever you're going to put it on is just peel your paper backing off and as you can see it's nice and shiny and it will adhere to just about anything let's see here do i have room on my little test piece here for this little guy i do not but that's okay I don't have any other other ones cut either but that's all right anyways now you know how to make yourself a cute little patch using a felty design you can also you can use um you can use vinyl as well 
This little guy here was um, a little oops. I forgot to put the back on um, before I done my outline stitches. But yeah, this one is made out of vinyl and everything adheres just perfectly. So that's going to be it for today's video. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, leave any comments below on anything you'd like to see in the future. And don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, I do have a Facebook group that you can join where I give away free felty designs. Um, you join my Facebook group and you can get this little guy right here for free as well. Um, we like to help. We like to be very helpful in our Facebook group. So if you are a newbie and you're not quite sure which way you need to go or anything like that, just give us a holler and we will be more than help, more than helpy, more than happy to help you. So until next time, I will see everybody again on a live stream. Bye.